All right, everyone, iOS 17 beta 5 has released to all developers. Let's find out exactly what's new. Okay, everyone, so let's jump right into this video. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is the actual build size for iOS 17 beta 5. And as you can see, this build size is actually pretty big. We're at 6.17 gigs, and it's pretty much the same on iPad OS 17 beta 5 as well. So if you're updating it on the iPad, make sure that you guys have at least 10 gigs of space to get this installed and get it installed correctly. Now, usually with a big update like this, one of two things is occurring. Either one, it's kind of the original beta one, where a lot of new feature sets and a lot of new features are coming out. Or number two is that it's the RC edition. So this is gonna be interesting to see what Apple does with iOS 17 beta five, because obviously we're not close to the RC edition quite yet. And also we've already had beta one in the big update, but let's find out what's new overall. So now let's look at the build number. Let's go into general and see exactly what we're working with when it comes to the actual build number and see how close we actually are to the RC edition. So if we plus on iOS 17, make sure that we're in here. We're actually getting much closer. So we're on 21A5303 lowercase d. So again, iOS 17 is supposed to release alongside the announcement of the iPhone 15, which should be early September, around maybe September 12th, maybe by September 15th, everybody will be able to download iOS 17 over the air. So we're probably, you know, two to three betas away from getting the RC edition, which is great to see. And just to quickly reiterate with everybody, if you do wanna be part of the beta program, it used to be a paid situation for the developer program of $100 a year, but it is free for anybody that just wants to jump into either the developer or even the public beta program. So kudos to everybody that wants to try it out. And I, you know, now at this point, I do recommend it. There aren't too many glitches, but we'll touch on those in a little bit. So the first new feature is gonna to be tough to show you because it has to do with Apple's new iOS 17 live voicemail feature. And the live voicemail feature to give you a synopsis is pretty much bringing the old school answering machine, but bringing it to 2023. And basically what it does is when somebody calls you, instead of going directly into voicemail for the other person, there's a little prompt that shows up and says like, hey, somebody will answer if they're available. And if that person leaves a voicemail, then it starts to transcribe in real time. So when live voicemail starts to occur, it makes it very cool to see and makes it obvious to see if it's an important voicemail or it's a call that you should pick up, which is kind of how answering machines used to work back in the day. But with a lot of people that were making that phone call, they were getting confused as to what was going on, right? They weren't aware that there was a live voicemail feature, this virtual assistant saying like, hey, they're gonna pick up the phone or they might pick up the phone to wait for somebody to answer the phone. So Apple changed that prompt and it now is a much more familiar voicemail experience. So if somebody is leaving a voicemail, it's a little bit more normal than it used to be. And now let's go into some things that we didn't notice. So the first one has to be in your storage. So if you go into your settings, then go into general, then go into your storage. So if I scroll down and go into iPhone storage, and then scroll all the way down and go into show all, and then keep scrolling all the way down, there is now a new category called synced content. This wasn't here before, as you can see, I don't have any sync content. But now if sync content does take up any storage, it'll start to show up in your iPhone storage, which, you know, for better or for worse, it's there. But overall, that is what you're dealing with when it comes to a new storage up. But small updates on this new beta five. The next one has to do with shortcuts. So I don't know about you guys, but I do use shortcuts a decent amount. So if you guys want to watch a video on that, I'll link it below. But with automations, especially, I use those to kind of turn off and on the lights whenever I'm at home, you know, whenever I'm leaving the house and things like that. So what they actually added was a little bit more functionality for location based automation. So basically, if you go and make a location based automation, so let's do when I arrive, there is now a new option to run after confirmation. So basically, if you're walking in the door and you have an automation set up, so to turn on the lights or turn on the radio or turn on, you know, your AC to pump a little bit lower, it's not going to ask you to confirm to do that versus before it would just run immediately. So that option used to be here. And now it's back with beta five. The next one is in the health app. So if you go into the health app, Apple's new state of mind feature just keeps getting tweaked a little bit and more and more. So this is their new state of mind, which basically allows you to log how you're feeling throughout the day. So it's kind of a mental health awareness. It doesn't really do anything besides track that for you. So if you don't actively do this and it's not gonna help you at all, but if you actively check in once or twice a day, you can kind of see a graph of your mental well being. And Apple just continues to kind of tweak it a little bit. So if I wanna log something, this is a new little kind of animation or a new kind of picture showing it off before it used to be a little bit different. I'm gonna press next here and you can see that it does look a little bit different. It is kind of cool. So if you're very unpleasant, it goes purple. If you're you know very pleasant, it goes kind of this bright sun orange. So just some new tweaks that Apple's doing, nothing functionally different, just kind of the way that it looks. 
Some other smaller changes, not really features, but small changes Apple made is if you go into your control center, the new flashlight icon is actually a little bit different. It's a little bit of a thicker flashlight versus before it was a little bit of a thinner flashlight. So something that we noticed that's different there. So now the next feature has to do with Safari. So in Safari, if you guys notice with iOS 17, if you go to your private browsing, which I'll show you after the splash screen, it basically by default made you use your face ID to unlock that private browsing section. Now you're given that option. So when you go to the private browsing from Safari, this splash screen shows up and it basically says private browsing will lock when you leave Safari, leave private browsing or lock your iPhone. You can unlock private browsing using face ID or your passcode. You can change this later in the Safari settings. So now you have the option instead of by default making that choice for you, turn on locked private browsing or not now. So if I turn it on, now it needs face ID to get in. Now that's something that Apple gives you the actual option to do. And then the last one is that in Apple Music, there is another new splash screen. So it kind of talks about share play. So everyone can play and control music in the car. So basically share play inside of Apple CarPlay, which is great to have. You also have the crossfade between songs, which is now customizable. And you have song credits in here, which we've talked about in the past. Repest continue. And if you go into the this section right here, you now have a couple of new stations. So the first one is gonna be down here, which is now an AI generated Fernando Silva station. So basically it takes what I like and makes it, you know, gives me a playlist or radio of what music I would like. And then you also have the discovery station that is also new in Apple Music. So something to consider. Now let's quickly go into the settings and talk about battery life. We'll go into battery life and let this load up, and you're gonna to start to see exactly what we've been getting over the last 10 days. So we're getting about seven hours and 23 minutes of screen on time, about two hours of screen off time. But you can see that I am charging it a decent amount. So on a day like yesterday, I charged it about 100%. I got nine and a half hours of screen on time. On this day right here, I'm about 125%, so I charged it during the day, eight hours and 42 minutes. So battery life is actually getting much better overall with the iPhone, and I'm using an iPhone 13 Pro Max from day one, if you can see from my battery health, I'm at 86% battery health. So something to consider, which is great to see. I think one of the big reasons is that Apple's just optimizing iOS. It's getting closer and closer to that public release. And people will be very upset if for some reason they update to the public version of iOS 17 and the battery life ends up being atrocious. So that is what we're dealing with from a battery life perspective. Overall, great updates. And I'm sure it's even better with a 14 Pro Max. For now, let's finish up this video. So that's about gonna do it for this video, everybody. Like you saw, we're now on beta five. And even though from a storage perspective, this was a six gigabyte update, there wasn't really much going on, right? So as we're getting closer and closer, Apple is gonna be tweaking things instead of giving us these game-changing features that we saw in the beginning, and they're not even game-changing to begin with. But again, Apple's gonna just reiterate and kind of retool everything to make sure that it's ready to go for the public release kind of in mid to late September, when iOS 17 finally comes out and the new iPhones are released and announced. I am happy that Apple's making changes to the live voicemail and the visual feature, as well as giving us a better experience for the actual end user at the other end that's making that phone call. But other than that, you're gonna see just bug improvements, bug fixes, making sure that the performance is good to go. Battery life hopefully is getting better over time. And then lastly, just making sure that everything's tightened up. But, but that is gonna do it for this video, everybody. Leave a comment down below of some changes that maybe you noticed that we didn't, or maybe your favorite feature so far in iOS 17. If you're even on the beta program, always good to know. And if you did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below. But if you guys wanna watch some more iPadOS, iOS, and macOS content, click on one of these videos right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando. I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.